This is the M2 Max, and I want to see how it performs with Blender, a program I quite like. So first, I'm going to be doing a rendering test so you could see how fast it renders a couple scenes compared to a 2020 iMac and an M1 Max. I'm also going to try doing a fluid simulation and see how that performs, as the last time I did this, it was with my 13-inch M1 Mac, which was pretty slow at fluid simulations. Anyways, let's download Blender. For those of you who are doing this for the first time, make sure you to download the Apple Silicon version and go to Edit Preferences. And enable Metal, which dramatically speeds up the renders. Just as a comparison, when I tested this a week ago with the M1 Max, it went from 19 minute render down to 10 minutes, with simply enabling this feature at least with that demo file. Anyways, I'm going to be testing the rendering capabilities first with a large scene, this case the 3.3 demo file, then a smaller render, more to the scale of what I typically do. In this case, it will be a VR scene that I made a week or two ago. Okay, so now to the rendering. You can see the M1 Max took 9 minutes, 57.9 seconds. The iMac took 24 minutes and 25.65 seconds, which honestly is quite mind-blowing to me, since this is only two and a half years old. And for the M2 Max, it took a full 6 minutes and 52.55 seconds which is ironically nearly exactly 30% faster, like Apple said when they announced the MacBook, definitely a nice speed bump in this case. And here's a chart for those of you like me who like the visuals. Okay, now it's definitely worth mentioning how Blender actually runs while you're navigating the scene, and while it's not perfect, I am still impressed by it because this is such an intense scene. But now let's see with my smaller VR scene how much faster, if any, it really is. For the M1 Max, it took 38.6 seconds, the iMac took 54.23 seconds, and the M2 Max took 31.74 seconds. Definitely still improvements, more so when you see the graph of it though. This is very useful because for rendering animations, it will be a lot smoother, even with these smaller scenes. Anyways, let's try doing a fluid simulation. While I had the M1 Max, I actually did test it, and you could see it still worked well. But with the M2 Max, I didn't drop any frames, and was actually able to leave it on replay to get decent results, at least with a semi-low resolution. I then decided to create a more complicated fluid simulation that involved a collision object, and a ball with rigid body physics on it, and also had collision on it, which resulted in this. This was pretty great, as doing something on my old 13-inch M1 laptop would have taken nearly all day due to waiting for it to finish baking. It still took a while with the M2 Max, since I cranked up the resolution to 300, but it actually worked, and it worked really well. Overall, this laptop is amazing, and will definitely work with Blender, and actually quite well. For those of you who are wondering what other applications I've been using with it, mainly I've been using Chrome, Visual Studio Code, DaVinci Resolve, Photoshop, and a little bit of Premiere. All of these applications have worked great, and I wouldn't expect any problems as this is the second generation of Apple Silicon. Anyways, hopefully I'll have this for at least five years, assuming something like the screen doesn't break, as it did with my 13-inch M1. Still not really sure how that happened, by the way. Oh, and for those of you who did see my video about the M1 Max nearly a month ago, I still think it's a great machine and worth getting if you would rather have the discount, but I ended up deciding to trade mine in for the M2 Max since I could still do that. I literally packaged it up and put it out the door and it went away. And then I got my new one. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful, and bye! bye.